welcome. It's great having you here today. This is a remake of my pine tar soap. And the reason I'm remaking this is because, well, I ran out. Um, pine tar is one of those soaps that is the probably one of the more controversial soaps that I, perhaps, perhaps even some other soap makers make. Why is it controversial? Well, probably more than anything, because it has a reputation of being a very difficult uh, product to work with. You'll see that the pine tar is a very thick, syrupy, sticky kind of goodness. Where does it come from? It's from boiling pine trees. They boil the pine tree down and they concentrate it down and boil it again and boil it again and this is what you get, which which is called pine tar. It's not tar. It just kind of has that consistency, uh, but it's not a tar. It's just the resins that have been so finely condensed down from the bark uh, that they create this nice dark syrupy stuff. Now, what is the benefit of pine tar? Well, many people believe that it helps with things like dermatitis, psoriasis. I cannot attest to those because I don't have those conditions exactly. I do have some uh, itchy spots on my body on occasion, but um, this is people that have sometimes some of those other conditions have found that things like pine tar or even coal tar in some cases, neem for some, uh, works well for uh, making their scalps uninhabitable by the bad things, or at least inhospitable to some of those bad things like psoriasis. I don't know this to be the case, but this is what I hear from others. And so this is a remake of that. I generally use goat milk in the solution, but this time I'm using aloe vera gel, uh, distilled water and aloe vera juice, uh, because I thought this one, I wanted it to be a little more fluid. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we go through the process here. The essential oils that I'm using in this are tea tree, sweet orange, and a little black pepper. So what I'm going to do first is combine in this thick, viscous, wonderful stuff into our oils. That's not how I generally do it. I've done it a couple different ways in the past, but I wanted to try this method and just see how it works for me. So because I can't run the stick blender and pour this thick stuff, I'm just going to work it into here and then I will hit it with the stick blender. Isn't that thick? It has a strong fragrance. I'm not opposed to it. It's not my favorite, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's But it's very strong and medicinal. And I think tea tree works very, very well with it. Uh, and mixing it with the sweet orange and the black pepper gives it a deeper and more complex, I think, uh, fragrance. It doesn't do away with the pine tar smell. You simply cannot get away with it, uh, get away from it completely, nor should you. It is after all, used like a medicine for the scalp. So very few medicines smell good or taste good. In this case, luckily, you don't have to eat this. <laughs> but I add those essential oils in for their beneficial qualities as well. All right, so it's a gloppy solution, that's for sure. Let me give it another scrape here. I'm going to try to get much of it in there as possible. Oh. 
Oh, I did not mean to touch the stick blender with it like that. But here I'm just trying to break it down a little bit. There we go. Now I'll get the stick blender on it and start incorporating it into the oils. Move this aside here. Have my goodness here of my beautiful, beautiful aloe vera juice, and this is our lye water and our aloe vera gel and sea salt. I forgot the sea salt. I always add my sea salt. And now I'm going to pour them into our molds. So these things set up so very fast. <laughs> I'm not joking. But, and you, you know, of course, I anticipated this. That's why I took all the precautions that I did, as I stated at the beginning. But these have sat for just uh, almost an hour. I didn't mean to be gone a full hour, but I was. I came back and I just took my fork. I was going to do a design across it, and I certainly realized it was already solid. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to give them, I'm going to let them sit overnight, of course. They're still very warm, which means they're gelling inside, so I'm going to leave them be. But tomorrow, or uh, when a few seconds for you, <laughs> I'm going to, when I take these all out of the molds, I'm going to put them through the loaf cutter and just take off the very top of them, the ugly part, so to speak. Then I'll cut them into bars and they should look a little better since I wasn't able really to do anything with the tops. Anyway, that was all I wanted to say about that. So we'll come back in a bit and cut them. Okay. So, I'm going to take off the ugliest top first, <laughs> I hope. Oh yeah, that came right off. Fantastic. So now we have a nice smooth top. So we can slice it. So I'll set these aside. I'm going to do the others of these just get them trimmed down before welcome back everyone so this is my new cutter I'll try to give you just a little bit of a you'll see that that's a very sharp blade <laughs> this is an, a guillotine type cutter and I believe that the style of cutter was created to cut through melt and pour soap, which I tested it out on and it worked very well on, on some of my own hard glycerin soap. So I was very pleased with it. 
and since my other one, the wires would break and they would get out of alignment, I thought this would be a much better style for me. Um, now I've got this set for larger bars uh, right now because I cut the top off which shortened them by about a half inch. So I'm giving it back because I believe in giving value <laughs> in my soaps. So what I've done is increase the width of the bars as you'll see here. And I just press this right down through the bar. And then this part I haven't got down yet. I think you're supposed to pull the blade all the way up first for safety. And then you pull out your bar. And there we have our first bar, but it didn't cut as thick as I thought it would. I'm going to cut the next ones a little bit thicker than this, I think. Let me weigh this and see what it weighs. Now, keep in mind, it hasn't cured yet, so it will lighten some. So I just want to be sure up front that it's at least... Yes, it's fine. Okay, good, good, good. So it is okay. All right. There's not much to show on these. They're going to look, as you'll see here, they're the same on the inside as they are on the outside. The blade did kind of do something that the wire doesn't do. I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of a smear down the soap. That's from the blade. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, hmm. Now these are pine resin soaps. They are different than other types of bars of soap. They tend to be a little bit stickier because this is with aloe vera uh, instead of goat milk. It's going to have a slightly different texture but I'm not sure that that explains that smear of the blade. So I'm wondering if the blade may... need to be cleaned in between each slice, which I certainly hope not. Um, but again, this is my virgin run on these. Like I said, I did cut through a bar of glycerin soap just to see how it would cut and it did a fine job. Um, and that may be where this really shines as in cutting melt and pour bars. Maybe not so much for cold or hot process bars. Um, I can only imagine. Now these are just a solid color. So to me, this is much more obvious that kind of smear down the soap and these are perhaps a little uh, soft they are still somewhat soft so maybe that's part of it but what I want to show you look right there on the end where the blade stops it leaves that odd little bump down at the bottom so this is going to take some getting used to if I keep using this. Uh, this was just an experiment. I didn't put a lot of hopes into this. Well, that's not fair. It's, I did put hope into it, but I just mean um, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. So that's what's happening. That's where it's sticking to the back side of the blade and it pulls away. Not good. And I don't like that you have to lift the blade up, which causes the soap to drop off. I don't know. I'm not happy with the... I can clean them up, of course. That's not a problem. And most of my soaps are rather rustic anyway. But I don't know that I would suggest this is the best solution for all types of soap. Now, maybe you've used one of these. These are very dangerous, by the way. We're dealing with a very sharp blade rather than a wire. So please, 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 if you do have one of these or get one of these, 
take extreme care. I wonder if I should lift it up first. Then pull away. Aha! So by lifting it first, it didn't leave that mark at the bottom. And you know what? That bar looks a little better too. Maybe that's it. There, no instructions came with this. There was no video. There was nothing. So I think I may have described uh, discovered it on my own. <laughs> Sometimes it's just common sense, but so I'm going to press it all the way down and pull it all the way up. Oops, it kind of flipped that bar, dented it up a little. Okay, I'm going to have to watch that too. All right. But that's the trick is to completely pull the blade back up. wonder if I hold that bar down as I lift up, like so. That's better. Okay, uh, so it's not perfect, but I think I have found the trick to this is to, well, you have to be very careful. You have to be careful anyway with a sharp blade, but in addition, you have to be careful with how you mount and unmount your soap. So press it all the way down. Then, oops. Pull it all the way up so the blade is retracted. And you get a little bit better cut. It's not perfect. This is going to, like I said, it's going to take some practice and also I was looking at this blade because this blade is so very sharp. Here, let me get a, here I'm going to take a photo of it with my phone so I can put it here in the video. But that's a very, very, now you can see what a very sharp blade or what how what the blade looks like so you have to completely pull the gate blade up and it snaps into place so you know it's protected it's between thin here you could reach up in there and cut yourself so don't do that then pull it up out of the way that's the trick. So you just have to, it isn't perfect. I think a wire does a better job, in my opinion. This does cut very even bars. I will say that. They're all the same. Oops, I forgot my the advice I just gave. Pull it up. Uh, one thing I can say, these are all identical. I bet I could weigh them and each bar would weigh exactly the same amount. And that's not something I could say about my old wire. It had gotten kind of, <laughs> had got, not gotten, it had cut where it was not doing such a great job. And you saw, you know, is making some crooked bars. So these are all the same. So I'm very pleased with the size of these. They all look the same, except for, you know, the imperfection in some of them. That's unfortunate. But I hope you enjoyed these. Again, these are a medicinal bar. They're not a beauty bar. But, and I think they're quite nice. They are, they're dark, they're medicinal, and they smell great. The fragrances, the, the essential oils that are in here, again, are the tea tree, the sweet orange, and a bit of black pepper. And it gives a nice, rather, I suppose some would call it a masculine fragrance. I don't think of it that way necessarily, but I know that some would look at it that way. Some issues with the cutter, though. 
well, what you could see. Um, there is some smearing of the blade. You have to cut it a very specific way and then be careful. Then even then, I'm not sure that it's great. Another issue I have with it is the manufacturer put a thing in here for their name. There was a sticker here, which was very unattractive that I peeled off. It was their company name, which I suppose I, you know, is understandable. But the way they did it was very poorly done. For whatever reason, they cut out this indented area here so that a longer loaf of soap could scrape down in there and get caught as you're sliding it through. This needs to be a completely smooth area. So that I think was a bad idea. If they want to put their name on it, they could put it either on the back of this board, which is here for whatever reason. It doesn't match the other wood. This is like a pine and this is like a compressed board of some type. It doesn't fit in this hole properly. They cut a oval hole there, but this is cut square and just stops. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, just from an aesthetic viewpoint, I just think these are a couple of things that they could have done better. Um, why wasn't this backboard made of the same pine? Um, and it's fine if you want to put it embedded into this layer, but when they're using the router, they should they could have routed the piece of wood and cut it to the length where it was rounded on the end and fit in there tightly and look so much better. So I do have some issues with it uh, that way, but it is what it is. Um, I, I would say the jury's still out on it, I, whether or not I'm going to use it on other types of soap, I don't know yet. Well, of course, I'll try it again, but anyway, that's it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. It's been great spending time with you, and I'll see you back soon, everyone. Goodbye.